Hello, everyone. And so uh, I'm Shubhra Bhattacharji um, from ICTS. I uh, was a PhD student with H.R. Krishnamurti. Uh, uh, I was in uh, IIC till uh, 2010. Now I'm here. So I'll be uh, talking about uh, some of the things that we uh, have been doing uh, recently, uh, a series of things that uh, has come out. And these are the collaborators. Uh, but let me first uh, start uh, by thanking the organizers for putting these things, uh, putting this meeting together. And particularly, uh, let me uh, start by uh, acknowledging all the things that I have learned from uh, HRK and Chandan uh, over several years. So it's rather uh, anomalous that they are sitting in the first row and I'm giving the talk. It, Usually, it used to be uh, the other way around. They're teaching things, and I'm trying to understand what they're, they're teaching. But uh, it's, huh? So, uh, so, so uh, basically, the, uh, as uh, Obishek pointed out uh, yesterday, uh, the, uh, there are a huge number of people in uh, this audience who have uh, learned a lot of things from them. and. Uh, really, uh, they, uh, the, uh, the two of them, along with uh, several other people uh, in the CCMP group and also uh, in, uh, elsewhere, have been very uh, have been instrumental in setting this con condensed matter and statistical uh, physics community uh, in India into motion. Um, and uh, the fact that we have a vibrant community of people uh, working in a variety of things uh, uh, in our country now. Uh, oh, uh, uh, the credit goes to uh, a lot to uh, people like HRK and Chandan. So, 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 so. Uh, I mean, um, uh, the body of work that these two people have really contributed to, and the extent uh, and the real influence of their work is really astounding. And so, these are just uh, a glimpse of the kind of things that. Uh, Chandan has worked on and HRK has worked on some of the things that I'm more familiar with. Uh, so, uh, but so uh, in particular, what uh, uh, would be relevant to these uh, this talk are two of the things that uh, Chandan uh, has worked on uh, several years ago, uh, and I'll touch some of these things and point out uh, the context uh, in which they are important and. Uh, uh, these two works, particularly this one, uh, is, uh, has uh, sort of uh, attracted a lot of recent attention uh, because of dualities that I would discuss. Uh, okay, so, so, but let me start with this other uh, work, which I'll uh, only be able to tangentially uh, touch upon. So, 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 in this paper that, uh, that uh, they wrote in 1988, they basically uh, were uh, trying to understand the effect of uh, uh, topological defects in spin systems. And in particular, the kind of, uh, so I'll basically uh, give a uh, very uh, symbolic summary. Uh, what they were asking is that, suppose I have a uh, transition from a in a magnetic system, like I have a magnetically ordered phase, uh, like the nail order, and uh, this order parameter has topological defects, like the hedgehog defect, which uh, looks like this. And I have a transition where the magnetic order gets destroyed, and I go to a uh, paramagnet where such defects are present, where th these defects are absent in the magnetically ordered phase. And the question, uh, 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 which uh, is of interest is, is there, is, a, uh, is there a finite concentration of such defects at the critical point? And this turns out to be a very uh, important question in context of unconventional quantum phase transition, as it was later uh, uh, sort of uh, understood. Uh, the reason is that if the uh, quantum critical point uh, uh, between, in the quantum case, uh, the, the, uh, the critical point does not have these defects, it leads to an uh, unstable uh, yuan spin liquid phase, which is actually a deconfined phase with fractional excitation and topological order. And if such unstable li uh, spin liquid phases are present, they can actually mediate uh, quantum phase transition between uh, two phases which have completely different symmetries. And this was pointed out by these people and uh, goes under the name of deconfined critical points. Okay. 
So, uh, so the other thing that uh, has been a uh, lot of interest, particularly recently, is this uh, phase transition of uh, lattice models of superconductivity, uh, in particular, uh, uh, the particle vortex duality of bosons that is discussed in this paper. And uh, the reason why uh, they have uh, sort of attracted attention recently is uh, because of this boson fermion dualities in 2 plus 1 dimension in context of fractional quantum Hall effect, quantum spin liquids, and uh, topological is uh, protected, uh, uh, the asymmetric protected topological phases. I'll discuss uh, the uh, uh, the influence of this work uh, in context of quantum spin liquids. Uh, but to set up the stage, I'll basically uh, give some introduction uh, the, uh, and finally uh, uh, discuss where this kind of ideas become relevant to quantum spin liquids. Uh, okay. So, 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 so uh, over the last 30 years, we have sort of uh, uh, realize that the symmetry based classification of condensed matter phases is incomplete and what we need is a, 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 a more general framework of describing condensed matter phases beyond spontaneous symmetry breaking okay so so uh, so uh, the, what we have further realized is that suppose we have do not have any symmetries in the system uh, does it still make sense to talk about phases of matter elect, uh, phase, electronic phases of matter um, and what has been realized is that in, uh, in absence of symmetry, uh, the quantum entanglement plays a major role in classifying phases. And in particular, what we uh, they have are short range entangled phases, like uh, phases which are like uh, typically product states, atomic insulators, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, and long range entangled phases which have uh, the finite amount of uh, 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 non-trivial uh, content of uh, entanglement entropy and examples of this long-range entangled phases include quantum spin liquids and some of the things that we uh, sort of uh, hear a lot these days, uh, the things like topological order, etc., are actually manifestations, uh, various manifestations of presence of long-range entanglement in a many-body system. Okay, so, so, so on uh, top of this, if you have symmetries, but you do not want to break symmetries, uh, the symmetry breaking uh, is always one way out, but if you don't want to break symmetries, what uh, symmetries can um, do in your system is that uh, the short range entangled phases can further be classified on the basis of topological invariance that sensitively depends upon the symmetries that are present in the system. For example, uh, things like integer quantum Hall effect of bosons, uh, the, uh, to have such um, phases, we need charge conservation symmet uh, symmetry. The uh, more uh, well-known the topological band insulator that we have requires time reversal and charge conservation to define all these topological invariants. On the other hand, in the long range entangled uh, 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 phases, what these uh, symmetries uh, uh, do is that they can now be fractionalized. Okay, so you can have various fractionalization patterns of symmetry, and these are called symmetry enriched topological phases. So, so we basically have uh, uh, some general idea of uh, how uh, symmetry plays a role beyond spontaneous symmetry breaking. So, what I'll do in this talk is basically discuss some of these issues in context of a, a sort of a famous problem in the field, uh, the spin half Kagome antiferromagnet, which has been looked at uh, over the last 30 or 40 years. So the uh, problem is uh, as follows. Sorry, I should have a, uh, So this is the Kagome lattice, and the, uh, I have a spin half nearest neighbor, forget about these dots, um, uh, nearest neighbor antiferromagnet. The question is, what is the ground state? And the, the, uh, the, uh, there are uh, now material motivations to try and understand uh, the, uh, the answer to this question. And this particular material, Herbert Smithite, uh, the copper spin halves are these um, uh, uh, green uh, 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 spheres, and they form this Kagome lattice. Uh, it's the same motif. Okay. So, 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 the, uh, so this forms an old theory problem. Uh, the experiments are much more recent. And uh, the, as far as we know, neither the, this model nor this material um, uh, have a magnetic order um, at low temperatures. And as far as the present understanding seems to uh, suggest that it's some kind of a quantum spin liquid. But the uh, question seems to be, what is the nature of this quantum spin liquid? The problem, this problem is, 
quite uh, difficult uh, because uh, there is no perturbing parameter which you can change to uh, gain access to the, uh, uh, to the answer. This uh, J overall uh, energy scale you can just scale out and uh, you cannot have any, um, uh, you don't have any handle of, on this problem. So for a long time, uh, the, yeah, it was uh, uh, believed that this is some kind of a um, uh, 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 close to some uh, phase transition and it has all kinds of anomalous properties because whatever perturbation people added, it just resulted in some phase transitions until recently when it was found out that if you uh, distort this Heisenberg magnet to this XXZ type of um, uh, system where you have the icing exchange different from uh, whatever uh, the xy part that you add i'll uh, specify in detail what this is uh, then it seems that uh, uh, many of the characteristic features of the heisenberg limit can be understood from this xxz limit and this is again one of the characteristic features of topological phases it does not particularly depend upon uh, 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 a lot of symmetries in the system and there are, uh, the, uh, there are numerical calculations that uh, seem to suggest that uh, the, these anisotropies in the spin space are irrelevant. So, so the question is that can one use this insight to gain uh, some knowledge into the uh, uh, Kagome problem? So the particular uh, the, uh, XXZ magnet that people studied is this. So I, of course, have the Ising exchange, which is the largest energy scale. And I have the nearest neighbor uh, XY exchanges on the Kagome lattice. But on top of that, the space diagram becomes very rich uh, once you add the next, uh, the second and the third neighbor XY exchanges, the second and the third neighbor being these. Uh, so th this is the Hamiltonian that was studied uh, numerically using DMRD. And uh, the phase diagram seems to be uh, as follows. This is the nearest neighbor uh, XY, and this is the farther neighbor uh, XYs. And this is the Heisenberg point. This is not a different phase. This is just to point out that this region um, may be materially relevant. And what is found uh, is that, of course, uh, near this, uh, 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 for small uh, next neighbor exchanges, there is uh, no magnetic order. Uh, the, and this is what is uh, what has been dubbed as Kagome spin liquid. On the other hand, if I increase this second and third neighbor XY exchanges, what I get into is a phase which has spontaneous uh, ordering of the scalar chirality. So you might think that this is a conventional phase since it has an order parameter, but uh, the same uh, chiral spin liquid uh, is applicable to it because in addition to that uh, scalar chirality order, it also has uh, exotic excitations like this uh, uh, spin half spin on excitations which have semionic statistics. Uh, one spin on, if you take it around the other, it gains phi uh, phase. And uh, if you put this uh, system on a torus, the degeneracy is two. So this was observed, and this is why this phase is not uh, the uh, usual conventional uh, the, the magnetically ordered uh, the, uh, ordered phase. So, so the aim is that if you, uh, the, uh, the, this uh, phase diagram it seems to be insensitive, uh, the general features of this phase diagram are insensitive to this XY anisotropy, and uh, the aim is to gain insight into this problem by studying the system in this limit, the easy axis limit, where this exchange is much bigger than uh, the rest of the exchanges. Okay, so so that's the problem that we want to attack. Yeah. Um, was the study which does this doesn't exactly solve this point when uh, the icing becomes equal to one half of the. Uh, yes, but I. So can you, can you So, so that uh, turns out to be on the other side of this. So unfortunately, there are lots of phase transitions on the other side. So that doesn't turn out to be particularly useful. Understand this, uh, not only these phases, okay? At this point, I don't care about the SU2. I've already broken it down, okay? Okay, so, 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 so that's uh, what we want to do. And I've just sort of drawn this red line uh, that I've uh, rotated it by uh, 90 degrees, and this is what uh, uh, it is at low values of uh, the, the next nearest number exchanges. I have uh, this spin liquid, which is time reversal invariant, and at higher values, I have a spin liquid which breaks time reversal symmetry. Okay, so what's the advantage of going to the easy access limit? Now, let's think about the uh, Ising magnet. 
ok. So, in the Ising magnet you can uh, uh, easily uh, uh, prove that the cl extensive classical degenerate uh, uh, ground state manifold is given by uh, given by the fact that when I take every triangle and uh, the spin configuration in every triangle is uh, up up down or uh, its time reverse partners. So, such that the total uh, SZ from each triangle is plus and minus half. And this uh, classical degeneracy, extensive classical degeneracy is lifted by whatever perturbation I add, but not leading to ordering that is the whole point ok. So, so, so then uh, it is useful to uh, introduce the medial lattice which is obtained by joining the midpoints of these triangles and introduce hardcore bosons uh, the, the, the A and B uh, the, for the two sub lattices of this honeycomb uh, and uh, the, the, they are connected to this. Uh, the, the total occupy uh, the plus minus half for each triangle in the following way. The, the, uh, the, the plus minus half is related to the boson density uh, at each triangle. So, then one asks uh, what does this S plus and S minus operators do? Uh, the, the S plus and S minus operators actually can be written in this form uh, the A plus, uh, A plus and uh, A dagger and B dagger, uh, the, and there is this gauge field which I will explain what. So, so to understand what these operators do, so let us try to take this uh, configuration this uh, uh, plus 1 means the, the spins are uh, the up in the uh, SZ direction and minus 1 means they are down and this uh, the, uh, this is the total value of SZ per triangle. So, if I act with S plus on this uh, side I take it from minus to plus and you can see that the uh, total value of a, uh, the boson density at these uh, changes bo uh, both in the positive direction that is why it is A dagger B dagger. So, th so that is the meaning of um, a, a and B they are the bosonic spinons and they carry spin half. So, what about this gauge field? So, as you realize uh, would realize that this is not a gauge invariant representation, uh, so, uh, uh, but what is the uh, uh, meaning of this gauge field? So, instead of doing a, a one spin flip if you uh, flip all the six spins in this hexagon. So, you see that uh, the spins if you look at the spins on this Kagome uh, sites they have changed, but if you uh, look at the A and B the, the densities of A and B uh, they remain same. So, so A and B cannot completely exhaust the uh, uh, this low energy manifold and to describe, uh, the, but these are two uh, different classical ground states to uh, describe that these are two classical uh, two different uh, ground states I need another degree of freedom and that is essentially this gauge field uh, the, uh, the, the dynamic u1 gauge field that I have here. And uh, the conjugate variable to that gauge field the electric field the lattice electric field is related to the spins in this fashion ok. So, so just to keep track of quantum numbers there is SZ conservation. So, I uh, the, the sp uh, spin ons carry uh, the spin half which is a global um, uh, U1 and uh, in addition there is a U1 gauge and uh, because it is A dagger B dagger uh, they carry opposite gauge charge ok. So, so, so uh, using that one can map this theory to this local um, uh, the, the, the lattice gauge theory uh, problem of uh, uh, bosons coupled to U1 gauge field and this is the Maxwell term. So, this uh, are the terms re uh, related to boson hopping and this is the Maxwell term coming from the uh, fact of uh, flipping spins over a closed loop ok. So, so, so I have a U1 gauge theory coupled to uh, uh, bosonic matter at some coupling constant uh, for the uh, gauge coupling uh, and I want to study this phase diagram particularly this red line which I have drawn here ok. So, so, so what I will argue uh, uh, using uh, mm, uh, more generalized version of the Dasgupta Halperin duality is that uh, the red line is uh, uh, part of this global phase diagram, uh, this rich phase diagram, uh, this the two axis of this phase diagram uh, the G is uh, uh, this gauge theory contains two kinds of couplings one is this uh, coupling to the uh, gauge field uh, the fine structure constant that is this axis and the, uh, this axis is the mass of these bosons that I have uh, the mass scale ok. So, so for the rest of the talk I will uh, try to uh, explain uh, the, this phase diagram uh, ok. 
So that brings me to the point, uh, 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 point uh, of this Dasgupta helper in duality. Uh, so, 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 so basically, uh, I'll, uh, I'll basically give a, um, uh, a modified version of the thing that are presented in this uh, the, uh, paper. Uh, uh, so what they uh, try to uh, understand is uh, uh, what happens to uh, complex uh, uh, the bosons in two plus one dimension. Uh, they're, they're given by uh, the, uh, the low energy description is uh, through this action. Uh, I have this complex bosons. This is a mass. This is a uh, FIFO term. And uh, the, uh, the A, A is just a probe U1 gauge field which couples to the global U1 charge. Uh, any U1 response I want to calculate, I uh, basically use this. And this is not dynamical at this stage. And we know that the phase diagram of this is uh, um, something uh, well understood. When uh, the, uh, these bosons condense, I have the superfluid phase, which has a, a Goldstone mode. And uh, the, uh, there is a Mott insulator phase where all these bosons are gapped out. And I uh, tune uh, these two phases to a uh, critical point uh, um, by ch uh, changing the mass, uh, by tuning the mass. Okay, so the positive mass, uh, the, the, the massive, massive boson phase is the Mott insulator. Uh, the boson condenses when the mass goes to zero, and that's the superfluid mode. Okay, so what uh, was pointed out is that instead of looking at this picture, one can actually describe these things in terms of vortices, and uh, the, the, uh, the, the vortices, again, are the topological defects of the, uh, the O2 field, and uh, the, this is one typical vortex uh, configuration. In the, in the superfluid, when uh, these uh, things ordered, there are, of course, no vortices. Uh, and uh, whereas in the Mott insulator, there are lots of vortices, and it actually is a vortex condensate. And notice that uh, the vortex uh, is a, uh, a degree of freedom which is non-local in term of, uh, terms of bosons. So, so roughly uh, what uh, one can do, uh, and this is, uh, you can do it uh, more rigorously, that's what uh, these people did, is that write down this vortex non-local uh, thing in terms of a core degree of freedom, which turns out to be a boson, which is phi tilde. And this long range winding in terms of a dynamic U1 gauge field, which is this uh, small a. So that's, so, 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 so you can uh, write this theory uh, alternately in terms of these vortices, and the theory looks like this. So you have, uh, again, uh, this vortex degrees of freedom coupling, now coupling to this uh, dynamic U1 gauge field, which has a Maxwell term. And it's coupled to the, uh, the U1 charge, the global U1 charge in this fashion. And roughly the mass of this vortex is uh, negative of uh, what the boson is. So in terms of the vortex, if you understand, uh, try to understand this field theory, uh, you have, uh, so uh, now this R tilde is the uh, uh, parameter that you tune. So, so when R tilde uh, is um, uh, the, uh, uh, negative, uh, you basically have uh, the vortex uh, condense, but when uh, the, so, in some sense, uh, since these vortices uh, turn out to be bosons, you have a vortex superfluid. On the other hand, when uh, the, the vortices are gapped out, you can basically integrate out this phi tilde degrees of freedom, and you end up with this, um, uh, uh, this Maxwell theory. And the Maxwell theory in two plus one dimension has a one photon mode, and uh, that's the vortex mod insulator. So, so, so the duality basically says that the two phase diagrams are related as follows. The superfluid in terms of bosons is related to the vortex mod insulator, and the Goldstone mode is nothing but the photon mode on the, of the dual theory, whereas the uh, mod insulator is nothing but the vortex superfluid. So that's the duality. Uh, so now, uh, so that's what is written here. So now, uh, the, uh, till now, this A was a probe U1 gauge field. But the aim is now to make this A as dynamical in the sense I want to integrate over uh, the A in the path integral. Okay, so so and uh, so this was roughly pointed out by these people uh, very recently. There were other works. Uh, uh, so. Uh, as far as I understand, there were uh, various efforts uh, uh, from the quantum field theory community, including uh, people like Spenta, uh, Siraj, uh, et cetera, and uh, the Wiseman group of Aharoni, et cetera. But uh, uh, the more familiar condensed matter version, uh, as far as I understand, uh, were pointed out by these people. Okay? So what you do is basically uh, add uh, these uh, terms. 
um, this is the yeah, Chern Simmons term uh, on both sides, and still the duality holds. And uh, you know, yeah, you also add the Maxwell term for the A field, the uh, uh, big A field. And uh, then uh, you ask, what is the structure of the theory? Uh, and also a Maxwell term. So I have not written out the Maxwell term because this is more relevant. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so, so once you have that, you can th uh, think about what uh, a monopole of this capital A would look like. So, because of the Chern Simons term, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the monopole carries an uh, electric charge of uh, a 1 uh, because of the Chern Simons coupling. And then, if you can, f uh, you can think about this composite where you uh, form a bound state of the electric charge, which is this boson and the uh, monopole. And uh, basically, you ask, what is the uh, uh, what are the quantum numbers of this object? So notice that this is a boson. The monopole is a boson. So uh, so because this is uh, uh, yeah, the carries an electric charge because of this Chern Simons coupling. Sorry, this should be minus one. So uh, the, so this is actually a charge less object. So its total electric charge is zero. But now, uh, the, following this very old uh, calculation, uh, uh, which dates back to Meghnath Shah, etc., uh, you can show that this sort of, uh, so to say, dyon actually has a relative angular momentum of uh, which is shifted by half. And also, if you take two dyons and uh, the, uh, exchange them, the, the wave two dyon wave function gains a minus sign, and it's a fermion. So, so, so roughly the way to understand is that in this particle vortex duality, what this term uh, achieves is uh, attach a quantum of flux to the vortex core. Uh, that's resulting uh, the change of statistics of the vortex core from uh, fermion to bo uh, from boson to fermion. Okay, so, 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 so that basically motivated this duality. There, uh, there is a, a conjecture that uh, this uh, now this gauged. Uh, 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 gauge D1 uh, the scalar theory is dual to free fermion theory. There is not a close proof in the sense of particle vortex duality, but there are some partial proofs considering various symmetries of the problem, uh, which I won't go into. So, so, so basically, the point is that the, uh, these uh, bosons coupled to dynamic gauge fields are dual to a theory of free Dirac fermions, and uh, uh, that's one step ahead of this particle vortex duality. Okay, so let's now return to this problem of uh, that we had uh, in our hands. And so uh, we had a, a bosonic theory with uh, the bosonic lattice gauge theory with uh, the low energy bosons coupled to Maxwell uh, a compact uh, Maxwell field. Uh, so and we wanted to understand this problem. So what I'll show uh, basically is that this uh, uh, the dual theory uh, to this is some version of 2 plus 1D quantum electrodynamics. And it uh, basically uh, helps us understanding this, uh, not only this line, uh, but in uh, context, uh, but, but a much more general phase diagram, which might be accessible uh, to a large class of models uh, for, uh, on, of Kagame antiferromagnets. Okay, so so just to remind ourselves, this was uh, uh, these were the spin uh, degrees of freedom, and these were the bosons, and um, there was a global uh, uh, SZ conservation, and these are the, uh, the uh, quantum numbers of these uh, bosonic spinons, and there was a gauge field, and this was the gauge charge. Okay, so so instead of going into the um, uh, derivation of these. Um, the dual theory, which basically uh, the, uh, the takes place uh, through uh, uh, the, 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 through a coupled wire boson, bosonization construction. Uh, so let me just introduce what the dual degrees of freedom are and try to motivate and then maybe answer your questions. So the uh, dual degrees of freedom are uh, two component Dirac spinors. Uh, there are four of them, F plus minus and G plus minus, and uh, they uh, are coupled to internal gauge fields. 
and uh, 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 because of these two uh, 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 these two gauge fields, this being a flow field and this being a dynamic field, I uh, 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 need to say how these uh, the uh, fermionic degrees of freedom couple to uh, these gauge fields, and this is uh, how they couple. So, uh, the, as you can see, that they, uh, these fermions still uh, carries the opposite charge. It's very similar to uh, the bosons uh, of the AS field. And time reversal symmetry, which needs to be present and is spontaneously broken, is implemented in this fashion. So, if you now take all the symmetries of the problem into account and uh, do a coarse graining, this is the field, uh, dual fermionic theory that you uh, uh, can write down. And uh, basically, uh, let me just uh, take you uh, through this. So, these are Dirac fermions coupled to uh, the internal gauge fields. So, small a, uh, the, um, uh, small AF and AG, both are internal gauge fields. There are Maxwell terms corresponding to it, which I have not written down. And the AC is a probe field, which basically uh, uh, measures the response uh, of uh, SZ current. And uh, there is a mutual churn uh, there is a churn simons term uh, like this, and the uh, internal gauge field is, uh, has a Maxwell uh, uh, term. So, on top of that, this theory is gapless. Uh, on top of that, you can ask what are the masses you can write down for the fermions which are co uh, consistent with the symmetries. And the general form of the mass term, the fermion bilinears that you can write down which are consistent with symmetries is this. So, 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 so this seems to be the theory that uh, um, uh, is dual to the uh, bosonic uh, uh, E1 uh, bosonic lattice gauge theory that we uh, started out with, and I'll basically try to um, uh, explain uh, that this theory actually describes a rich phase diagram uh, of this uh, kind, and uh, in particular the Kagome, uh, the model that I uh, described, seem to follow this red line. Okay. So, the key feature is uh, trying to understand what happens to these uh, 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 theory that I just wrote down uh, when uh, the uh, coupling uh, goes to the, the gauge coupling goes to zero. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, so when this gauge coupling goes to zero. So, so this is the line that we want to study and then uh, crank up the gauge coupling and uh, try to understand this phase diagram. So, the way that I, uh, uh, so when the, uh, E is 0, the, uh, these, uh, there, is, there are no gauge fluctuations of this AS gauge field and uh, the, that's what uh, this line is. And then what, do, uh, if I have these mass terms, I can integrate out the fermions. And once I integrate out the fermions, the form of the theory is uh, this. That you would realize that this is uh, nothing but a, a churn simons theory uh, with uh, various mutual churn simons couplings. And uh, the, the, that depend, uh, the sign of this, uh, the, the level uh, of the churn simons ter uh, term depends upon the sign of this mass. And you can think about various kinds of masses. In particular, if you have a time reversal symmetry breaking mass, uh, which is what we need to uh, try and understand. Uh, yeah, uh, this chiral spin liquid. Uh, we uh, basically uh, the, the symmetry uh, states that the form of the mass should be like this. And once the form of the mass, uh, the, the, we have a time reversal symmetry breaking mass, you can basically simplify this expression and you uh, end up with a, uh, the effective action which looks like this. So, incidentally, though I haven't described, incidentally, this is nothing but the action of a bosonic integer quantum Hall effect which has two counter propagating modes and uh, this is one symmetry protected topological phase. Uh, but what we are interested is not in this particular line, uh, but we are interested in this phase, which is what, uh, we, um, so to understand this, we crank up this uh, coupling from uh, zero. Uh, we increase uh, E from zero and what we have is basically a theory where I have this coupling and uh, the, the terms, uh, and the Maxwell term for uh, this, uh, the, this AS gauge field. So, so you can show that this theory actually describes a phase. So the time reversal symmetry is broken and this theory has uh, the excitations which are mutual semions and this actually describes a chiral spin liquid phase. 
okay so 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 another story that i haven't really touched is that going from uh, a symmetry protected topological phase to a, a, a topologically ordered phase and there seems to be again a structure of duality related between uh, these ty two types of topological phases so 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 basically the time reversal symmetry breaking mass uh, describes this part of the phase diagram and uh, this is uh, so uh, but let's try to understand what happens on the other side so on the other side, what uh, happens is that this theory becomes unstable uh, to parity breaking mass uh, of this kind. And again, uh, on, this, uh, uh, on this E equal to zero axis, it gives rise to a theory which looks like, uh, uh, like this, which is nothing but, again, uh, straight from the Dasgupta helper in duality. This is uh, nothing but the dual theory of a U1 cross U1 uh, superconductor, or in this case, in terms of the spins, U1 cross U1 magnetic order. And uh, once I uh, turn on the gauge fluctuations, I uh, lose one of these U1s due to Higgs mechanism, and I get a U1 magnetic order, uh, the, and this is again achieved by uh, uh, turning on gauge fluctuations. So, so, so that's uh, uh, what's happening on both sides of this point. Uh, uh, I get two phases, and I crank up gauge fluctuations to understand what happens. So, but. Uh, and uh, notice that these two phases that are uh, separate uh, that are separated uh, from uh, by this point are two uh, one is a, a conventional magnetically ordered phase and the other is a uh, quantum spin liquid phase and the uh, the critical point uh, separating these two hence has to be uh, uh, hence uh, uh, cannot be a simple critical point described in terms of only order parameters because if it uh, if it can be described in terms of order parameters, it cannot capture this topological uh, the aspects of these phase. So, 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 so this critical point turns out to be a uh, unconventional deconfined critical points, uh, something that I started out with. And uh, the, let's sit on at this critical point and try to understand what happens if I turn on gauge fluctuations at this point, okay? So, so there are no masses, and uh, the, now I can integrate out this uh, AS gauge field uh, uh, completely. That's this red part of this action. And what happens is that because of this particular kind of coupling, notice that this particular kind of coupling that we got uh, came from the fact that the two fermions uh, had the opposite charge under AS. And when I integrate out uh, this term, what uh, this particular uh, form basically locks AF to AG, which are the two uh, gauge fields. So let's call that some small a. And what you then can do is go back to this theory and replace all these AFs and AGs by uh, these A's. Okay? So, so the theory at the critical point is just this free for, uh, the, the quantum uh, uh, electrodynamics, uh, the, their gauge, uh, the, there are Maxwell terms corresponding to this uh, internal gauge fields, which I have not written down. So this theory, uh, since they, uh, both these uh, the spinors now coupled to the same U1 gauge field, you can introduce a four component Dirac spinor uh, like this, the psi, and this four component Dirac uh, theory is now turns out to be stable. So, so basically, even though this is a critical point uh, the, on this axis when there are no gauge fluctuations, on turning on these gauge fluctuations, the gauge fluctuations stabilize the uh, phase, and this basically is a, a stable phase uh, rendered uh, stable by gauge fluctuations. And uh, if, you, uh, if I try to understand the quantum numbers of uh, the, these uh, objects, um, uh, these fermionic degrees of freedom, they again carry spin half degrees of freedom, and they actually have a Dirac spectrum. So what I end up with uh, is a uh, uh, U1 Dirac spin liquid, which seems to be the candidate spin liquid for the Kagome uh, problem that we have uh, in this case. So, so, so basically, uh, the, uh, the way that we have achieved the, uh, uh, constructing this U1 spin liquid is by uh, taking this deconfined critical point and promoting the gauge fluctuations. And uh, the, uh, the fluctuation, uh, it's a deconfined phase which is stabilized by fluctuations, unlike the mean field, uh, the, the deconfined phases through part construction. So that's 
a candidate for the Kagame Yuan spin liquid, there are certain new, uh, recent numerics which seems to suggest that it's a uh, uh, gapless phase with linear dispersion. But there are many things need, uh, that needs to be checked. In particular, one can ask how is the, how are various symmetries implemented in this phase, or in other words, what is the symmetry fractionalization pattern uh, the, in this phase? So that those questions remain to be uh, answered. Okay, so so basically that's where I would. Uh, Try to draw uh, the uh, summaries. Um, my summary. So, uh, so the uh, so what I have done is use dualities between fermions and bosons in two dimensions, which is an extension of the dasgupta alperin duality, um, and uh, applied it to understand the yuan quantum spin liquids in Kagame antiferromagnets. And uh, as I pointed out, that this uh, quantum spin liquids are stabilized. Uh, this quantum spin liquid is stabilized uh, by gauge fluctuations. And uh, the question then is whether uh, people who are familiar with slave particle constructions of spin liquids, uh, the, there is no straightforward slave particle construction of the spin liquid, this spin liquid. And uh, the question then naturally is, is this construction beyond the mean field theories? Uh, is this a phase which is inherently beyond the slave particle mean field theories? So at this point, we don't know the answer. It's just that we haven't been able to uh, come up with uh, a pattern construction. And uh, the, the, uh, then the, the million dollar question is, is this the ground state of the um, Heisenberg uh, antiferromagnet uh, or the uh, Herbert Smithite? So, so, so uh, I don't have the slide, but uh, basically there seems to be some um, understanding that uh, the Kagame antiferromagnet seems to allow a gapless spin liquid which has a Dirac spectrum. So, so that point seems to be uh, positive, but again, to understand this in detail, we need to understand all the quantum numbers of the low energy spinons, the fermionic spinons. Okay, so with that, let me uh, try to end and take your questions. No, no. So, uh, so, so the boson mass uh, remains fermionic mass. Okay, and then uh, how, so when you say that this chiral mass term go vanishes, so this yeah. uh, you calculate how it vanishes or is right. Hmm. So what I have not discussed is uh, what controls these mass terms. Yeah. Okay, what controls this mass? So so uh, so uh, basically, what happens is that in the theory there was a spontaneous time reversal symmetry breaking uh, due to the development of the scalar chirality. So this mass uh, that I wrote down actually comes from a uh, FIFO theory, which uh, the uh, FIFO field is actually the scalar chirality field, which is a Z2 field, which controls the mass. And on the, uh, so that uh, describes this, this side where I have a time reversal symmetry breaking mass. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, when uh, I'm on this other side, I can integrate out this uh, phi field and but that uh, n equal to 2 uh, QED turns out to be unstable to chiral symmetry breaking. And that's why I have this chiral mass uh, that spontaneously takes, uh, uh, that, that spontaneously breaks chiral symmetry giving rise to the magnetic No, but that uh, theory that controls this mass, right? So yeah. doesn't it go soft? I mean, doesn't it affect the critical uh, regime there? No, so, 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 uh, so the point is that if you try to understand what, uh, what, uh, what are the uh, scaling dimensions of this phi 4 uh, field, it, uh, it turns out to be irrelevant at this critical point because the, uh, of Dirac fermions. Uh, if it was this Fermi surface problem, uh, that would have been problematic. Yeah, so, so the, uh, if you look at the chiral spin liquid, yeah. uh, the degeneracy on a torus is just 2, is it? But then that is uh, quite different from a typical long range entangled phase where you expect that the degeneracy in a torus should be four. Uh, you're talking about Z2 spin liquids. Yes. So, 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 so basically the Z2 spin liquids, uh, the electric charges are mutual bosons. So that's why you have uh, two uh, Wilson loops, okay? Because uh, now, now here the electric charges <coughs> are semions. So you actually end up with only one uh, independent Wilson loop. Okay, that's why the degeneracy. 